Thank you. Thank you all, and thanks to the chairman for inviting me to share a little bit of experience. And uh, I think uh, grant application is a part of uh, our life. So, but it's not everything. So uh, this is only part of our work, and, and, and I will uh, do what I can. So, uh, but I also look forward to hearing other people's uh, experience. And, and I, I guess I started with where we start from uh, when we uh, learn to write a proposal or, uh, or uh, preparing an idea or research an idea. I think the first one is really learning from others. So that's how I started. And, and some of your colleagues might be very happy to share their proposal if you may get a copy. And Sometimes it's also good to learn from mistakes. And one year's failure comments can be useful for next year's proposal. And very often, like uh, we submit a paper and so on. But I think it's also important to be open-minded to new ideas. Because if you prepare to be academic here in Hong Kong for the rest of your life, and 10, 20 years, you need to sometimes write 10, 20 proposals. It's very difficult to come up with 10 or 20 fairly new novel ideas. So very often, we need to synthesize whatever we have, get into our head, and, and I will talk about that. And I also find it's useful to talk to your students and, and trust the peers if you have a good idea. And so uh, uh, if they do not understand you, that might be a problem. That's where you start to communicate. I think that's uh, where I, I would first comment on that. So anyway, assume you have a good and, and, and perhaps useful idea, and then the question is, uh, you know, you really need to research it. So it's part of research. And, and I believe one of my colleagues told me he had been thinking about this, this project all the time. So, but put a time frame, at least you need to start a few months earlier. Uh, and, and that's where, otherwise you cannot write everything out from nothing. So I guess you have this idea, you need to refine it. You go to literature now, they're so useful. I mean, spend time on Google Scholars and so forth. And talk to your peers and define and redefine. And once, eventually, you come down to one major hypothesis. I mean, this is a GRF proposal, not TRS or, or CRF. And I feel uh, this is time that you start to learn a little bit about the possible impact, uh, long-term impact. And that's, you know, that's our part of our project. I, very often I found this part actually difficult to write, but it's very, very important. So if, if there's no impact, why working on it? And, and this is where you start to master the literature in this particular uh, topic. And sometimes you need to throw away the idea and you need to work on a new idea. So I found out that sometimes missing a keyword, simply speaking, you miss the entire discipline, perhaps. I will talk about that, how I, I feel about it for the last two proposals. <clears throat> and this pro process actually helps you to provide the materials for the part of background of, of, uh, of research and for other people's work. Uh, and, and that's, I sometimes spend quite a bit of time in this part because this is where people start to read your thought and how your logics flow in the proposal. And for instance, this proposal, last proposal that the chairman asked me to talk about, it was uh, actually the idea started uh, really started from, there was different other ideas, but by March 2014, and then October you apply for it. So someone told me that, hey, he, he worked on an industrial project, he found out that those people taking a flight have a risk for diarrhea, started from someone vomiting. It's called norovirus. It's a little around 100 nanometer diameter virus and vomited in the uh, uh, toilet. And some people, when they look at this, you know, the red one is people infected. And they find out, actually, those people sitting around the aisle seats had a high risk. And I, I found this was interesting. But in order for him to find out, actually, he needs to, uh, to do a little simulation to find out how people touch surfaces and assume they are uh, you know, the seat back, seat back and toilet surfaces, there's maybe a 40, 50 important surfaces. He found out actually for a flight of three hours and those surfaces being touched by everybody, they all rooted to the same, off, uh, same uh, root surface. At that time, we did not understand fully why. Because I had interest in infection. I all the time working on the airborne. But suddenly somebody telling me, actually, these surfaces grow log uh, uh, logistically. And this thing really 
burns me, and, and I was very interested in the topic. So I went into uh, uh, study literature and see why that thing happened. And then I thought, oh, this might be my next GIF. So that was uh, much interesting. Uh, and, and so, but you need to develop the idea, so, and, and then you, you, but it's not my area. You know, I study infection, but I don't study formite root. They call it formite, the contaminated surface root. If you touch something, that's why you wash your hand. So I found out actually there's not so much literature. Everything statistics. So you need to go into literature, formite root, a lot of names, uh, terms that I don't normally associate with, social network, and this one I know a little bit, branch processes. You go in, the uh, mathematician, they know. It's a huge area, you know to discuss, uh, to study why the certain, some surname disappeared. Uh, and the robotics, uh, they define, grasp, and grip. And surface engineering, how to modify the surfaces uh, to make the surface antiviral, antibacterial. And actually, there were even more. Uh, going into quantum mechanics and tribology, I feel, oh, too broad. So they go to a new uh, proposal. So the scope and the focus also becomes an issue. Here and you cannot do everything, and and uh, as time goes, I draw this diagram. I, I think by May something. So you touch these surfaces, and then you find out quickly there are not so many surfaces to touch. All the surfaces being touched, and then you feel oh, this whole thing is more important than airborne sometimes. So for those people who know a little bit, so it's engineering suddenly going to some different areas. So research good idea, research good, uh, do a good idea. I think you have to make it doable. So this is where. Uh, as you get deeper into the idea, you learn what it needs to be done. And that's where you find out actually something you cannot do yourself and with your traditional skills you have. So this is where the collaborators become important, but I, one thing I find out, collaborators is not one day you can find one collaborator. It takes time to understand. So do uh, make friends as many as possible. So then you uh, start to look at your past work, how uh, your past work can be uh, associated with it. And in case you are lucky, have a little bit of preliminary work, and then they can support your new hypothesis. If the two, this one was a little bit too new compared to what I used to do. So then I, during this work, and students started to, to do a little bit of things and show the feasibility of the project. So uh, one of the ideas I do is that, oh, how do I measure it? So I mean, you go to talk to other young people, they know uh, fluorescence particle will be very useful. Without, before you know about it, you have to, then I ask you know, to buy a few and try out, and it is possible to measure it, and the touching. And then we go to the laboratory, find, oh, this is so-called uh, 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 SEM or, or any other uh, 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 AFM atom force uh, microscope, things they can measure the surfaces. So I just go to the lab, get a surface, try, let uh, my colleague give me a try, and I found it useful. It reveals a lot of things I can do with the surfaces. Anyway, so. This is where you feel uh, may, maybe it's feasible. That's how I went through that process, real process. I talked to my student how I went through this process. But you know, if the idea is so good that you cannot stop, this is where, uh, and actually you don't mind if they don't support you. Because I talked to another colleagues and they said, if they don't support you, you always find someone to support you. Or eventually you find your own student to work on that. Eventually write a paper and someone will support you later. So, Anyway, but there are some tricks, uh, I think, because uh, such an idea, uh, the focus is specific, uh, how we do about that? I mean, it's only three years, two or three years, and they don't give you more than one million engineering normally. You apply for one, more than one million, they still cut down to maybe less than half mi one million. So uh, too ambitious, maybe not feasible. I normally write, test me, always three objectives always two or three, don't to have too many. I think this is also time to choose a good title. It takes a long time to do it. A title has to be understandable by many people. And then you can re-examine this one sentence hypothesis, which is sometimes very difficult to do. Anyway, I was thinking how to present this stupid idea to reviewers you know, uh, uh, for this network. So uh, one day I thought about the Chinese uh, fan the ladies using the fan, you know. And then I draw this one to show how the network in the University of Hong Kong campus can grow from the gates to lift to each individual building, each individual building to each offices, this kind of thing. So, I mean, this is a little bit too much. I will not go to detail. It's just presentation is also important to show your ideas. Uh, and particularly if it is a 
relatively different from what used to people have seen in the literature. Um, anyway, before this, I, uh, I should have done hospital, but I, uh, based on years of uh, work with hospital, I know to get permission to put those fluorescent particles on the hospital surfaces. Uh, I think I need to donate one arm in order to do it. So instead of I say, okay, campus, my office, no one can stop me. But then I actually also find out I need to get through the SD office, safety office, sorry. That's a, a, anyway, once you do that, methodologies. Methodologies, many of us have something called the Chinese Kanja bending. What you are good at, I'm almost sure, every professor, otherwise you will not be a professor. But the trouble is, this, if these existing special outstanding skills that you have may not work, and then you need to find new ones. And this is tricky. And this is one benefit, being the head of the department for a few more years. The reason if you are the head of the department, you go to all the labs, you know. 25 to 30 laboratories in my department I visit twice a year. So I know exactly what's in the, each lab. So when I have a problem, I can find it. Not many colleagues know all the laboratories. My colleagues can, can, can. So really you need to know whatever you propose for the equipment in the equipment budget, you need to know exactly what they can do for you. And I think to know a little bit what's available in this world is useful. It's developing very, very fast. So this means your research plan also needs to be researched. It's not something that you can just write because sometimes it may not be feasible. Have I been too fast? Um, I'd like to go on to work on what is good idea, what is bad idea. Uh, very difficult to, uh, I think, to, to prove because when you think, think it's a good idea, it may not be a good idea to other people. It doesn't matter if you really think it's good, as I mentioned earlier on. So, however, if you want to get other people interested, you have to present it in a, in a, in a way uh, uh, that other people can understand and, and you know, reviewers may be busy. So, hence, that you have to realize that they may not be able to read every word in your proposal. So, this is one I like. If you can make reviewers have a, <laughs> I hope, to have a good intellectual experience when they read your proposal, they will like it. And you know what I mean, actually. If you read a good book, you have that feeling, and that's what it is. So you need to think about how to present graphically. So this is a graphic that took me three hours to draw, uh, and uh, I was very pleased when I write it. Anyway, last, not a very last, about summary and abstract. I feel most <laughs> difficult part, experienced uh, uh, Proposal writers, uh, I can see someone smiling. Very difficult to write, because they don't let us write many. In. It's called the abstract, you know. It need a filter, so you, you need a, to filter the language. So I think normally, very amazingly, I ask experienced uh, uh, senior colleagues, they all get down to the started with background, tell why you do this, and wh where is the gap, and then you actually write this one sentence hypothesis, the most important work you want to do. And, and then you, sometimes it's a, you need to direct it in an elegant manner. Very difficult to tell, you think long time. And so I think then you summarize what you are going to do and, and, and then the broad implication of your work. So to give you example, eventually I never wrote a Nature article, but uh, I look at this uh, nature article requirement. They tell you how to write a, a summary. For those people who have gone through it, you will find out very interesting. Actually, it's, it's an evolution of proposal writing, I feel. One sentence, the main results, always one sentence of your hypothesis. All the rest the same as I described. You know, broad, broad general contest. So they give you this example, tell you how to write. So I feel maybe for GIF, this is also GIF proposal abstract similar to that. But the only difference, the work is not done. So it, what you propose, the here it changed to not the main result, or your main hypothesis, and, and this, instead of main result, you discuss your main methodologies. So that's all. Anyway, that's uh, maybe useful. Two more slides. Before your submission, I think, uh, Normally, I try to get uh, the draft early. And first, I, the draft is so bad, you know. So I sent my student to, to, to have a look. 
Some students, they don't like me, so they criticize me. Huh? Some students, they like me, they politely criticize me. So eventually, uh, the proposal a little bit better. And then I think it's important that we send to other people to read. And normally I send, uh, actually I got a few friends in the US, so they, they read, they, they just tell me this part is not understandable. So then uh, you have to have some people can write you long, longer comments than the uh, RGC reviewers, I think. The, those are the ones useful, otherwise not useful. They don't tell you the truth, you know. So very often, uh, I, I heard from my colleagues, I actually before this talk, I talked to a few people who are really good at writing, and they told me they do the same, and they send more people than I used to do. So, uh, and then for some people, you need to send uh, the whole thing to English editor, and better to do send it earlier. For Hong Kong, you, you know, if you send to very late, she's very busy. So then she can only look very quickly. Do it a, a few weeks earlier, then you get the benefit, I think. That's how I feel. My last <laughs> advice, the idea came from students. I, I, I always believe a good student makes a, a good professor. Forget about it, a good professor cannot make a good student. So, you got it? So, a student normally have a lot of good ideas, but if you want a good ones, you have to listen to his bad ones first. That's how I feel. And so, uh, thank you very much. <laughs>